Hi everyone. Hi everybody. In today's video, we are going to be discussing or sharing with you 10 reasons why your nail polish chips. 10. 10 reasons. Okay. We've been getting a lot of questions and a lot of people have been asking why their nail polish is not lasting. So I figured this is a good time to actually come up with a video and talk about it in detail. Yes? Yep. All right. So number one, this is the most common reason uh, that I see most often. Damaged nails. So you can see, yeah, you know what? You can actually see that these, this part of the nail is a little damaged. Um, you can see that it looks a little dry. So the surface damaged this, uh, the surface is a little damaged. This portion looks quite healthy. So we've done a lot of manicures. We've done a lot of soak offs and after, you know, um, acetone exposure multiple times in one week, there is some damage. Yes. So in the next video, maybe not next, but soon <laughs> we're going to do another video about what to do to keep your nails healthy. Cause there's many different ways of help, you know, to help your nails. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that would be the first reason. And I've had clients um, and viewers show me pictures of their nails and it definitely looks like they're damaged. So sometimes uh, after removing um, acrylic or removing enhancements, removing gel polish, the nails are damaged. And that definitely will cause the nail polish to chip because the thing is, the first few layers of the nail are the most resistant to damage. So when the those layers are removed, the layers underneath are more spongy and they don't bond to any products very well. So product bonds the best to the first few layers of the nail. Once those few layers are gone, because they're usually over filed or chipped off, the product does not bond very well. So the key is to not letting that happen. The reason number two, naturally soft and bendy nails. So some people uh, naturally, just like with hair, some people have very coarse hair, some people have very fine hair and soft hair. So some people some have very- Some people have no hair. That, that too, but <laughs> usually people have nails. Um, and so when someone has naturally soft and bendy nails, these nails do not hold product very well. And it doesn't matter if it's nail polish, it's a gel polish or anything like that. So normally, um, you can tell if the nails are naturally bendy, if any nail should have a bit of a give, right? But you can see that these nails do not give too much. Like when the edge, you see, I'm not bending it whatsoever. He doesn't have any free edge. Um, but if you have very, very bendy nails, no matter what you do, you will have problems with the nail polish sticking. Oftentimes, People think that their nails have to be super, super hard. The nails have to be somewhere in between. They can't be too bendy and they can't be too hard. So what I suggest when someone has a very soft, naturally and bendy nails to use a hardener. And I'm going to make another video because I don't want to go kind of too much in too much depth uh, about this in this video, but there are certain nail hardeners that help nails that are overly bendy very quickly because I can't uh, resist sharing it. Hardeners, what they do is normally nails have like a network and they're kind of, let's say like this. So hardeners, what they do, they cross link the nails more so that the net is tighter like this and that makes it harder. But if people have hard nails and use hardener on top of it, then the nails get very brittle. So the, the only reason why you want to use hardener is if you have very naturally bendy nails. Number three, the nail polish might chip or peel if you have touched the skin with it. That's why I don't believe in nail polish changes because if that area, the cuticle, which actually I made a very important video, which I'm going to link and add in, in the cards, um, it's very important that you do like a basic manicure before each time you polish the nails and just pushing back the proximal nail fold, which is the living skin and removing the cuticle is very, very important because then you can apply the nail polish very nice and neat and a little bit away 
from the skin. That is a beautiful black. Yeah. So you see, this way, you want to apply it. So what happens is, I'm going to do this. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. When you go too, too close like this, and you touch the skin, not the cuticle, because we removed the cuticle and watch the video. Um, when this happens, when the polish dries, it shrinks a little bit. And with this touching the skin, it's not creating a nice clean seal. So you can clean it off. And you know what? I actually did a very good job right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But it's very hard to clean it off very, very clean, right? So, um, well, if that happens, then obviously <laughs> try to clean it off very well. But if it dries like that, it's just going to peel from this area. It's going to come off. Reason number four. <laughs> Applying nail polish over wet nails. Very often what people do is they soak their nails in water before doing a manicure, before doing their nail polish, which is not the best idea because nails, um, if you just wash your hands, it's fine. But if you soak your nails for more than 60 seconds in water, they absorb a lot of the water and nails are like little sponges and they expand with water. So then when you put the polish on a nail surface that is expanded, and eventually the nail dries, the polish comes off, right? Because your that nail plate moves too much and mm -hmm. you also are applying polish over a wet surface. Like mm -hmm. even if you painted a wall, like if you have to, you know, patch up some areas or if the wall is wet, you wanna wait with painting until the wall is perfectly dry because the paint is not going to stick properly to a wet wall, right? Also, um, doing your manicure after taking like a hot bath or sauna or anything like that wait until your nails are perfectly dry and use cuticle remover wipe it off with water is fine but not more than 60 seconds approximately number five number five would be fight number five would be cherry picking so basically mixing lines so you know using a base coat from one line using the polish from another line and using a top coat from another line it can work but it's always best to start with the recommended base coat and top coat because the companies usually test the products and obviously they try to make them as good as possible with their own base coats and their own top coats. Um, especially polishes like the new kind of generations polishes like the Infinite Shine, you wanna make sure that the base coat is also Infinite Shine, the top coat is also Infinite Shine, and the polish is Infinite Shine. Number six. Number six is applying thick coats. That can definitely lead to peeling of the polish in like sometimes whole pieces because the polish has never dried properly. So I always try to do um, a coat as thin as possible. The first coat um, usually could be quite transparent. So I'm picking up a nice amount of product, making sure that I'm not over applying. And I don't go over the area more than twice, like this. So that was number six. Make sure that the coats are pretty thin. So here I'm going to show you what coat would be too thick. So what some people do is just they grab a full brush of product that's dripping almost and just going like this. Because that kind of gives you a very good coverage you see, this is way too much nail polish. You made it look really nice though. I know. <laughs> and that's the thing, it, it makes it look good. Um, there are often, even with sheer colors that don't cover very well, what people do is they just apply a lot of the polish and this will not dry properly. And that leads to number seven, which is not letting the coats dry between the coats, not letting the polish dry between the coats. Yes? All right. So each polish will be a little bit different when it comes to drying time. 
Um, this one, you can see that it's already dry. This is perfectly dry and we can put another coat. So what I recommend is doing 10, 10 nails and giving your nails like at least five minutes to so sometimes 10 minutes. Like you're gonna have better results if you let that coat dry. Base coats usually dry very, very quickly, but the first coat of color, make sure you dry it. So I'm going to show you application of the second coat and a good amount is this. This would be a good amount. Number eight. Okay, so we talked about water. So even if you applied the product on a dry nail, soaking your hands in water for extended period of time, like in a bath or swimming a lot, will actually- Or copious amounts of dishes. Dishes, yeah, yeah, good idea. Uh, good, good point. Um, good idea. No, it's not a good idea. No, it's, not, it's a bad idea, but a good point. Um, so, yes, yeah, soaking your hands in water for a long period of time makes the polish peel off sometimes because it makes the nails too flexible, too bendy, and the polish just comes off. Number nine. Okay, so number nine would be not using oil. And you would right away think what good skin and good nails have to do with polish chipping, which it does, but this is not actually for the skin and it's not actually just for the nails. Um, using a good quality nail oil that has a small molecule, which would be a jojoba oil or um, avocado oil, sunflower oil as well, applying it on the product, on the nail polish helps as well. So what it does, it actually plasticizes and prevents the product from becoming brittle. So this is a miracle, not just this oil, but just generally oil. It really, really helps to keep your skin and the nails healthy and the polish or even gel polish flexible because with time it becomes brittle. So what I suggest is buying a small bottle and just dabbing it. Like you don't have to use a lot, just dabbing it like this. That's what I do. Would you like to demonstrate? No, I think you How much are you using the oil? Because you never do. Oh, All right. I, that's not entirely true. I like that mango stuff. It's true, okay. And just kind of rubbing it in after each time you wash your hands, ideally. It really, really helps. And yes, using very small amount, I'm going to demonstrate here, just in this area and rubbing it in. Number 10. And we're gonna have also number 11. Oops. Anyway, so number 10 would be not wrapping the free edge. And to be honest with you, it does not necessarily cause chipping, but it, it could cause like shrinking or pulling from the free edge. So what I do is I make sure that I apply the product on the free edge in a very small amount. So I'm going to show you. Small amount. And then just putting a small amount because I see sometimes people really put a lot and then that doesn't dry properly. So cupping the free edge helps. It's hard to do it yourself. They're hard on short nails, but try it and it might help preventing the polish from wearing on the free edge or shrinking a little bit. So when we do number 11, mm -hmm. I'll put my hands down and just stick an additional finger in there. Me? Okay. Yeah. And a bonus number 11. 11. 11. <laughs> um, the nail polish can chip and not last well if it's too thick, if it's too old. The polish itself. So not just the application of the polish, but, but the, age of the, polish. the age and not even the age, because you can have a nail polish that's very old, but it has a very good consistency. So the consistency. Mm. So what happens is it's not really how old the polish is, but how many times you've opened it very often, right? And another very important thing is um, making sure that 
the the uh, the neck I guess right of the yeah. bottle stays nice and clean so what I do is I always wipe the sides and pull it off and I don't when I put it back I'm careful so it doesn't drip all over the the neck because what happens is once that drips when you go to close the bottle um, it has a nail polish there and then it does not create a perfect seal so then the air gets in and even if you do close uh, sorry clean the the neck of the the bottle the polish is in there you see it should be nice and clean inside because if it's like goopy all over the place it's not helping another very important thing is to um, not over thin the nail polish so normally it is not recommended to use the nail polish thinner too much so what I do with other brands is I buy the nail polish thinner that goes specifically usually with the brand. I don't like to use generic ones. So for OPI, I would use OPI. What I do is if the polish gets a little bit too thick, I add a few drops to thin it out, but I only do it once. When it gets thick again, it's gar garbage. Because you cannot replace the solvents which evaporate at a different rate. So you cannot make that perfect combination, that perfect recipe, and the quality of the polish starts to deteriorate, right? So with the exception of Dazzle Dry. So Dazzle Dry has their own um, Revive thinner, and it is very different. And I would never use any other thinner with Dazzle Dry. And Dazzle Dry recommends use, because it dries so quickly, the solvents evaporate very, very quickly, so you must um, use it you must you must have it um, especially the top coat some colors I find you can almost get down to half the bottle and they don't thicken up very quickly but some do some colors do so it's important to always keep it fresh and not letting them go too too thick because then it's very hard to to uh, make a perfect consistency again so it doesn't dry you want to make sure that the consistency is very good and what i suggest is just getting sometimes a new polish and kind of seeing how how thin it should be same thing with the top coat you don't use it with a base coat just the polish in the top coat other brands what i do is i thin it out only once and then once it gets thick again i throw it out because then the polish is just not the quality just isn't there anymore and it can cause chipping for sure okay so that was a lot hopefully it will help you and it will make your nail polish stay longer. Let us know what you think. And if the video was helpful, please share it with others. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Ciao.